Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to the Nexus Gaming Series. My name is Bahamut. On the left-hand side, we have the members of Randy Newman. On the right is going to be Annie Oak League. This is a Division C West matchup, and I'm sure you're sitting at home chugging your 30th beer and wondering how we got here. So I got you covered, my friends. Randy Newman will lose the coin flip. That means that the opposing side opted for map pick priority for game number one. Randy Newman banning out Battlefield of Eternity and Dragonshire. T uh, Tomb of Spider Queen and Towers of Doom being banned up by Annie Oak League and Infernal Shrines will be the first map chosen by the members of Annie Oak League as they opted for map pick priority for game number one as an Ana Grey Main will be already banned out. They don't want to deal with the lockdown from Ana as well as her uh, healing buff to the friendly team and healing nerf or I guess debuff to the enemy side. Grey Main's dive overall is really strong and I'm going to alt F for this entire match. I don't want to be here anymore. Where did the dog go? Uh, he has to do analytics and he has to run the North American production for the stream. Bandit Bandit is the key critical factor that this stream runs properly. Kael has to be banned out as they don't want to deal with the wave clear, the living bomb, the CC from the gravity lapse, as well as the overall shrine clear he can bring to the table. First pick for our Randy Newmans. Actually makes a lot of sense. Uh, Diva did get some nerfs, but we'll see if that's enough to actually pull her away from first pick, first ban priority. The pug please is perfect. I'm so, thank you. I mean, if we're having a chore gold ban, we might as well. Zul Jaina. Uh, I feel like they're gonna go and I mean, this isn't really so Gilly Shark, but they end up doing this a lot, is they literally just draft these like massive wave clear compositions and just push wave after wave into the enemy team. The other thing to consider too is do we have a main tank Zool? ETC will be coming out for the Randy Newmans as they want to have that power slide, face melt, all that good stuff. They can also go for block at level 1 if they want, or they can go into the Guitar Hero, which is very, very rare, but typically we see the uh, proc rock for the healing to the friendly members around. But a Stukov will be grabbed. There's some great synergy with the ETC Stukov right there. I'm like Romedy. I'm upset. I'm legit upset about that second ban from red team, from blue team, excuse me. Uh, Banwise on the right hand side. They need some sort of shrine clear, so they could actually get rid of a mage again. Orphe is not a bad idea. Lunara is not bad either. A lot of good single target damage. Damage over time is also something they might be worried about depending on their healer. Um, speaking of healer, they do need one on the right hand side, so they could look to get rid of like a Lucio for the speed boost to be able to have sustained damage. They could get rid of, I'm trying to think what's going to be synergistic with their composition right now. Ana's already banned out, so no nano boost value. Uh, Rhaegar's really not sitting great on the table. I'd say maybe just ban out Extraza. She did get a buffed. She's pretty strong. Oh no, Deckard. Excuse me. I'm forgetting about the old man. Just ban out Deckard. Wow, a Garrosh man. The reason I wasn't talking about any tanks specifically is because of the Zul. I, I wonder if we don't see a tank or if we actually do see a tank. It's going to be a Diablo, and if I'm not mistaken, this is a very strong Diablo because it is Gola's Diablo. I might be misremembering who I've played with in the past, but I want to say I've either played or watched Gola have a very good game on Diablo. Uh, to synergize with this, um, you know it wouldn't be bad? Like a Hanzo. You could actually play off of the slows from Jaina or a Rainer. Rainer's actually great for this as well. I would like both of those realistically. It gives you good wave clear and all of that, but it looks like they're going to grab the Deckard Kane. The only reason I was it was I was talking about the Rainer is because I feel like they could actually grab this on the side of Randy Newman. Like Randy Newman, like the Rainer would be really good to knock back the Jaina, the Zul, the Diablo, anyone trying to step into the friendly team or get into the back line. Um, and they already have their healer on the side of Randy Newman, so it's not like there's going to be a priority for a Deckard. So that's why I was saying get your more get more damage, get your sustained damage out. But let's see what they pick up here, as they do need some sort of wave clear, and there's going to be the Rainer coming in. They might not have a priority onto Rainer whatsoever, and they might be looking at the Hanzo, and they were like, oh, we, we can go Rainer, we can go Hanzo. Our last pick doesn't matter, but me personally, that's at least the argument I would make, is swap the Decker Kane in for your, for your, uh, your second damage or your ranged assassin or melee assassin. Um, though, looking at this, they could honestly, they legitimately actually could go into a thrall for level, for level, for the solo lane. Uh, the sustained damage is really good. It pairs with the friendly team with an earthquake and all of that kind of stuff. I'd love to see a thrall. They're going to go for a tracer. So this will be a Zul in the solo lane. Because I was the reason I was saying, I was like, because if you have Zul with the four man, you can you can farm Diablo souls faster. You can get uh, regeneration globes for Jaina faster and Decker Kane can just supply healing. And I, I thought like a, a, another 
Another Bruiser would it'd be more hyper carry on the Jaina, but Thrall does supply a lot of good damage and a lot of backline like harassment. And Sundering is a good tool. Earthquake would have been a good tool, but either way, we are going to get that tracer to round things out, which I'm always excited to see as well. So pull it back to Bandit and I, and we'll go ahead and figure out what we think for this actual draft. Um, extra spice, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mayor Malganis. You know what's really crazy, Geo? Uh, Malganis like fell off super hard, and I don't feel like he got many, if any, big nerfs. So it might just be like tank priority as of late. Um, you say that when Hollow Life Gaming Cat Girl. Wait, what? Wait, what did I? Wait, what? Whoa, no, what? I'm on a 20 second delay, so sometimes I say things and forget what I'm even talking about. Uh, Any Oak League is the best team name in all of NGS. Really, Giggle? It's a bold statement. I'm a little partial to uh, Randy Newman as uh, they have everyone named some sort of Randy Newman variation. But we're going to load into it. We're going to get into game number one, and we'll find out who's going to be taking Infernal Shrines here to kick things off for our final three game. Ga oh, my God. Th be best of three series. I'm still stuck on uh, CCL where it's three game series when I have to do that. Anyways, on the left hand side, we have the members of Randy Newman. We have Wandy Wu Man. On the rain, excuse me, on the rainer. Uh, I have to for I forgot that the names are just I don't know why. Like I saw this and I knew what I was getting into and I was just like, God, God damn it, Bahamut. All right. On the left hand side, we have our Rainer, we've got uh, Nandy Ruman on the Diva, Randy Newman on the ETC, we have got uh, Randy Newman on the Sukhoff, and Tuna Newman on the uh, Gul'dan. On the right-hand side, we have the members of Annie Oak League. I believe it's Galleon is going to be on the Deckard Kane Transformer on the Tracer, Gola on the Diablo, uh, Yatre, I think it is, on the Zul, and Vince Noir on the Janas. The Power Slide will be coming out from the uh, ETC at the start of everything, and they're not going to be able to find any sort of kill initially, but Tracer getting low. Diva bursts forward, or boosts forward. Tracer's able to get a short distance blink into the wall, and is able to just back off with 100 and some health, as Noir is going to be low. Gola providing a lot of good supplemental CC to allow Vince Noir to be able to back off, and they'll be able to do that easily. Let's go ahead and look at some of our level 1 right now as we do have the echoed corruption for the ghoul dam which is going to be already at seven stacks out of 40. that's not an easy task in the, in the initial fight they really lined those circles up fairly well as it's a power slide back through gola there's going to be a lurking arm out from Randy Newman, but there's going to also be Vince Noir jump, dumping some damage, and there is a wonderful scroll of ceiling from Galleon. Up in our top lane, we have uh, Nandy Ruman versus uh, Yatre, and I expect the Zul to kind of win this over. I don't know how aggressive they're going to be. It really will depend on the rotations, I guess, from the enemy team. I was wondering if they would be able to force the booster out from them with the uh, skeletal, not skeletal bridge, the bone prison. There's going to be an invade on this camp, overpower from Gola, and that actually pushes ETC in, but they're going to try and zone them back with a scroll of ceiling. Transformers misses the pulse bomb, does get a healing, uses their medallion as well. Point looks like it's going to go over to our blue side. Randy Newman and friends able to grab that. Transformers able to grab a potion from the Deckard Kane in bottom lane as Nandy, Ruman, and Yatre are going to be just pushing things back in mid lane. Transformer looking for a flank onto this mech, trying to burn it down, but they force the boost away as there's going to be an invade onto the camp from Wandy, Wuman, and friends. Galleon is going to be able to throw out a Herodric Cube to zone them or at least get vision of them this is also going to be <laughs> this is going to be field study for the Decker Kane as the power slide won't connect from Randy Newman the recall comes out from Tracer but that's going to be the Nexus Force is a little too OP and that will be first blood in favor for the members of Randy Newman and they're 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 lying to us right <clears throat> excuse me they said that one of their players was at the bar they're pl they're not playing like one of their players was at the bar. Like I can't go to my local peanut bar and have six Coors Lights and then come back and play in a competitive game. Like I can't even do that. I can't even drink one beer and play in a competitive game. Like I shout out to the player who went to the bar and is currently doing fairly well for themselves. I'm not going to out them. They can do that if they want. Uh, but either way, <laughs> we have our first objective up and available in bottom lane. Arcane Punisher to be grabbed and up and available for these players as Transformers and Vince Noir are going to finish out their own shaman camp as these fallen shamans are getting Transformer very low. They need to be cautious right now, but with 194 health, this Tracer is enjoying playing at the low health bar area as it's going to be 6 to 5 in levels. Diva is completely 
probably missing their health as, uh, can I hit tab? Can I? I forget there, there was a way I fixed this beforehand. Oh, well. Oh, wait, maybe? Nope, that's cool, Dan's little health bar. Uh, either way, one day we'll get it. Point, patch point six nine will come out soon for Aliobs. Until then, we're gonna have Dracoa looking for a invade onto them. Randy's gonna be just kind of doing their best to harass, gonna power slide backwards through a couple enemy members, not getting the actual stun. That's gonna be Diva boosting in. They have the mech explosion. They can drop that. That'll get the rest of the six skeletal defenders, and it will zone back the enemy team. They drop that mech explosion. There's a scroll of ceiling underneath all this. There's going to be the arcane punisher picked up from the mech explosion value. Vince is gonna get power slid, but there's not actually a good step. Forward forward from Randy Newman to be able to body block them through the gate. Tuna Newman was able to get a wonderful echo corruption as they're already at the 20 mark for those stacks. They need 40 total to be able to get that back step on the echo corruption, but still being able to have that halfway done four minutes into a game. That's not bad whatsoever for our Randy Newman's as Gola slowed by the weighted pustule power slide from Randy Newman. Wandy is trying to put the damage in onto Transformers and Gola. They're not able to find as Randy Newman does have to back off. Wandy Woman is getting harassed by Tracer, but Randy Newman is able to power slide backwards. Randy Newman is going to lur use a lurking arm as Wandy Woman is going to provide a lot of sustained damage out, while Tuna Newman is still throwing so much out themselves, and it seems like Randy Newman and Anne friends will not lose one. They'll get a lot of great siege from this first objective, and they'll try and grab themselves this camp. Is there an invade out from Annie Oak League? Tracer, maybe? No. We do have our uh, next objective already announced for mid lane, so it will be a Mortar Punisher. Should be somewhere around the six minute mark in the game. I think my caster math is good on that as the recall is gonna be in the exact same spot. There's a wonderful lurking arm from Randy Newman and uh, no power slide from Randy Newman, but they had a lot of good damage from Tuna Newman. How am I doing chat? <laughs> Better be working at the bar, not drinking. I, I don't know. That's what they said to me in chat. Oh my god, the dive, but they managed to get the bone arm. Oh, the damage over time from Gul'dan. I thought the backlash value would kick in. Unfortunately not powered, excuse me, face melt from, not the face melts, dear lord. We're gonna have the shadow charge from Diablo, a lot used onto Randy Newman, who's able to use the gladiator's medallion and back off as Vince is gonna try and step up. The penetrating round will slow them down. Echoed corruption, excuse me, that was a fell flame out from Tuna Newman as there's the echoed corruption at 32 stacks. That is really quick for this game. I know I keep mentioning that number, but it is, it's not easy to finish out those 40 stacks and they're really finding some great angles as uh, Transformers comes up into Nandy Rumen and top lane they might be able to burn down the mech but don't forget diva it does have that pilot form which is really good at putting out a lot of good damage or a lot of damage so oh man my, my objective timer by the way is just off so bad i said six minutes 622 so I, I i thought when it popped up on the map it was already 30 seconds but it must have been a lot shorter as goal is looking for a shadow charge can't find a power slide out from randy newman transformers coming down putting some damage onto tuna newman and they back off Wait, yeah, but look, but later looking up noses, it will be worth it. Wait, well, no, what, what, no, huh? I'm so confused what's happening in chat. Anyways, I love you all. Shrine is going to be activating in the next 30 seconds. We are going to be seeing Zool rotate. Oh, I did a one minute 30 instead of a two minute 30. That's why my timer was off. That's complete, like, honest to God, I, I legit thought it was one minute. It's two minutes. It's two minute 30. I was thinking it was like Dragonshire or something like that, or uh, Braxis Holdout. Can't even tell you're drinking a beer. The only one that makes you slow down is Nandy Ruman. Yeah. There's a couple. There, it's just, it's just, yeah. I haven't seen their name enough. We do have, though, the camp on the right-hand side. We'll be grabbed by the members of Annie Oak League, as there also will be the Randy Newman camp pushing already in the top lane, and Randy Newman and friends will be already on this objective phase. Nandy Ruman is going to be able to use the mecha explosion, as they do have that up and available. Gola stepping in with a... Friendly team as the apocalypse comes out. There's going to be the pulse bomb onto one. 
We do currently have a uh, Gladiator's Medallion news on Wendy Wooman as there's going to be the pop onto Transformers mosh pit coming out from Randy Newman as the stale wild listen comes out from Galleon trying to turn things around as Nandy Ruman in the backline is trying to find the damage into Vince Noir but they can't seem to manage to get enough into this excuse me into this Jaina as Tracer did go down as well as the ETC mecha explosion is going to zone a few members back Gola gets the overpower not going to be able to step Ed with a shadow charge into Wendy Wooman as Galleon is going to back off there's a lot of damage into them and Vince tries to throw some back them themselves go low in this mech form but the second punisher of the game will go over to the side of randy newman and friends as tuna newman is going to push up the wave here with the help of randy newman and wandy woman we currently have nandy ruman in the top lane with his against yarte yatre again excuse me we have Randy Newman rotating in on that ETC. Golich is trying to put some pressure on this enemy team, but realistically, Randy Newman and friends can look for a dive under this tower, or at least the tower themselves. They have a lot of good damage, and they need to supply that into the structure, as the Zul will go down to the damage from D.Va. Looks like they utilized their mech form to put pressure, and then stepped in in that pilot form to solidify the kill. Very well played from them in that top lane. As the Pulse Bomb goes onto Wandy Woman, not going to be able to get a kill onto them with that. Just putting some initial damage, they managed to back off and still get healing from Randy Newman on that. Stukov as Tuna Newman is being pinged by someone. They sidestep the scroll of ceiling. Horrify comes out. Power slide out from Randy. This is 13 to 12 in levels. Flailing swipe should have enough disengage value. Meanwhile, in top lane, Nandy Ruman is just dumping damage out on this diva. And the one thing I haven't done in a little bit here, and we have some time for it, let's go ahead and cycle through the other numbers, get an idea of what those look like as we haven't had a chance to look at the damage, experience, and healing for game number one in our second best of three of the evening, as they might look for an invade onto this on the side of Randy Newman. They have the higher talent here. They could look for this. Power slide is available for ETC. They don't. I think they actually got bopped out by the uh, by the Diablo. They drop a mosh pit as the penetrating round forces four members in. The Hyperion continues to supply damage during all of this as Gul'dan cleans up one. Rainer finding another. Gola very low here. That souls to be reset on Diablo as the camp wasn't even finished out. Actually, no, excuse me. It was finished out by the red team. They managed to get the channel, but that mosh pit value finding double kill triple kill technically the diablo going down they'll be able to grab themselves the fort in bottom lane and if they can grab the frozen frozen punisher in bottom lane as well they're going to be finding a very very strong keep pressure in bottom lane with the subjective phase as well as their Mm, they might have talent tier advantage at that point. I don't remember when the Punisher went down, but we're probably somewhere in the 12 minute mark in the game, I feel, for our next objective phase. So easily enough, they should be able to rotate around, grab a few waves and manage this 16. But I'm watching right now. They don't want waves to find this 16. They want kills as there's a power slide. Going to bop them back in. Yatra is going to be backing off. Diablo going to be doing as much to pressure against them as that's a stay while and listen that comes up. The Horrify will shut that down. Unstoppable used onto Randy Newman. Randy Newman using flailing swipe gets hit with the pulse bomb. Diva. Nandy Ruman is going to be coming down here trying to throw in those micro missiles. Face melt will go out as ETC does get cooldown reduction by six seconds because there was a change onto this. It went from six percent to five percent and for anyone wondering what that is when it actually comes down to breakdown in seconds it's roughly 7.2 seconds and well it was at 7.2 seconds now it is at uh six seconds i believe it's six, it's six seconds flat the original was eight percent which was 9.6 seconds per face melt it's roughly a tenth no not a tenth because it's 120 seconds but yeah caster math rounding it's roughly it was like roughly a tenth of the actual cooldown which is wild but 16 talent here in tow for the members of Randy Newman as I mentioned before and they should have had it for this objective phase and they definitely will as they will steal this camp away D.Va pressuring the top lane fort Hyperion coming through this might be a tool just in case the enemy team was lingering around Hyperion's a bit of a cooldown it's I believe 100 seconds so they won't have that for the next objective phase but we already are at 88 seconds so they're already burning their way through that cooldown and they can kind of hold off for a couple seconds here and actually you know what they won't have it for the objective but they'll probably have it for the the push potential if they do get this i don't expect any oak league to invade onto this but you never know some teams are a lot more advantageous than you know oh yeah thank you software yeah the same goes for um camps as well if you ever want to know camp cooldowns like currently the top right bruiser camp is three minutes 22 
You never need to click on it. That's going to be a shadow charge from Gola with the Apocalypse underneath. Horrify comes out, and that is a kill onto Tracer, who is locked down. ETC power slides in. Mosh pits too as they find the kill into Zool. That is so much damage and set up from Randy Newman as they're still on the far side of this. Nandy Ruman boosts through, and that's going to be a pentakill for our Randy Newmans as the Frozen Punisher is picked up by them. They're going to grab a camp from mid lane, and this is a lot of, a lot of momentum built by our blue team. I'll try and show it for the next one as well. But yeah, camp timers, it's it's a godsend. The my I don't know, I don't know how I feel about this, but like part of me wishes like a like Cursed Hollow it actually gave you the like the timer if you looked at it. I don't know why. I feel like that'd be cool, but that feels also at the same time like overbroken. Like I think that's too much information. Tracer's gonna recall, but it's in the exact same spot. They're gonna get bopped twice, three times realistically, because the Rainer found that penetrating round, and that will be a kill. Staggering out of a death onto Tracer, just as Randy Newman and friends are gonna be pushing in through the bottom lane. And that's keep going down. They're looking to step in towards core. As you can see, their posturing is aggressive. A lot of potions from that uh Ruby from the Decker Kane is the a Punisher's gonna jump over, Hyperion coming through, Yamato Cannon's gonna get some decent setup damage onto this uh, onto this core right now as they already burn through this 60-some percent left. That's gonna be the, uh, I can't remember, Poison Nova coming out from the Zul, and that's gonna be Diva Mech Explosion being weirdly pushed around the core, but it will go down before that even happens, and that is going to be game. Number one over to the members of Randy Newman, GG, well played. Learned it from Bahamut. He's smart guy. I don't know about that. Thank you, though. I always like to bring up that little fact because I feel like a lot of people don't know that. Like, legitimately, and I'm not trying to shame them. Like, I told that to Paradox in CCL Season 2 on a live broadcast. And he was like, wait, what? Seriously? He's like, you're blowing my mind. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. I repeat a lot of the same things on the stream, but I feel like there's a lot of people that sometimes come in here and they can learn one thing. And if I can teach one person one thing in my stream, I'm a happy camper, honest to God. I love teaching people stuff. Like, I enjoy teaching. I used to do it for side work. I was a snowboard instructor. All right, they got to decide on a map, so I'm going to decide on what to drink next. Ugh! Okay, I'm back. <clears throat> God bless. Why are we God blessing? All right. I might have missed a lobby invite. I don't think I did. Uh, cool. So we can get into next game in just a minute. Uh, team score on the left side. Do you think that the Randy Newmans take this in a 2-0? I don't think they will. Rough start? For uh, any Oak League, you mean? Oh, I should turn on the fireplace when I was up a second ago. It's getting cold in the house. Uh, any Oak League, I, I honestly, I think they had really, really strong early game and it just, like, once it fell apart, it fell apart. And I hope that's not like rude to say, but like my whole my my whole thing that I want to get on this is we can actually talk about this really quickly. As I almost fall off my little platform. Uh I think their early game was really strong. They had a lot of good back and forth, but there was a point where Randy Newman got too many kills, and I think the entire team like turtled up, not only like mentally, but in the game as well. Like I was gonna say physically, but that's not what I mean. Um
I say we say game see game three. I think so too. I think there's a possibility. Like I think I think Annie Oak League got shut down pretty hard in that game, but I think that it was the momentum. Like I literally think Randy Newman built momentum that they just couldn't stop. And I my thought at this point is I think they need to get onto Tuna. Tuna Newman had so much freedom in that last game. Like I feel like Gul'dan rarely got dove or dealt with in a sense. So if they could maybe get onto Tuna, that might be their critical player that they can kill off. Because like, let's be honest, like sometimes there's a critical player on a team. Like, let's say like, if you remember back a, a while ago, I was doing a couple of the Wednesday streams with the Heroes uh, Hearth people when I was joining like Bakri and Totski and Kyberries and Matlock and all of them. Like, um, oh, uh, ready. But anyways, um, like Mockery, like if as long as we kept Mockery alive, like that was our critical like clutch player. And like you, you not always, but sometimes you'll have that critical clutch player. And if you can shut them down, you can start to change the momentum of the game. So my two cents to a any Oak League is is find the momentum to shut down Tuna. I think that's really it. Let's go ahead and get into Bolskaya Foundry, though, for game number two. We are already loaded on into our there we go. That was weird for a second. Um, so we have first pick first ban coming out for the members of any Oak League, and we are going to be on Sky of Foundry, so I'm totally not buying time to properly get a set, uh, set up for this. No, no, no. The members of... Uh... Oh, let me actually mark this in my notebook. I was buying time, I'll be honest here. So they wanted this, so this will be that. Okay, so the home team this evening is going to be Randy Newman. They lost the coin flip. They banned out Battlefield and Dragonshire. Towers of Doom and Tomb of the Spider Queen were banned out by the members of Annie Oak League. They opted for map pick priority for game number one on the side of Annie Oak League as the winning coin flippers. And they uh, they chose to take us to Infernal Shrines. They lost that, so they opt for first pick priority for game number two, which means Randy Newman and friends are going to choose the map, and they chose to take us to Volskaya Foundries. All right, let's get back into our draft. And uh, what do we have here so far? ETC Diablo. So they're going to respect the ETC from the last game. They're going to ban out their own Diablo. I don't... How? How could you do this to me, Randy Newman and friends? May is going to be the first pick on the right-hand side for the uh, Annie Oak League. A really good... A uh, lot of good control coming out from May. In, in comparison to, like, ETC, they're fairly similar. You have the icing, which is, is similar to, like, power side face melt. Um, you have some zone control with the Blizzard. So overall on this map, I think she's really strong. I honestly think you, you could just go like Joanna Deckard here and just have a solid one two pickup. They're going to go Stukov. What are they going to grab instead? Because I feel like I might be wrong. Stukov Chromie. Now, Chromie, is, she sits in a really good spot right now. So I'm actually I'm liking this. There is a diva that's still up and available. And I wonder if the members of Annie Oak League have any sort of priors prioritization onto the diva. Um, she was strong in the last game for the enemy team. They're going to go Lee Ming diva. OK, yeah. Makes sense. The Leeming is going to provide a lot of poke damage as well. I like that quite a bit. So ban wise going into this, the members of Annie Oak League need some sort of support. They could look to choke them out. Decker Kane, as I as I say, like Deckard actually in the last game had a lot of clutch moments. So I would consider banning out Galleons Deckard and forcing them onto something different. Alex draws is up and available. Rhaegar's up and available. Uh, Anduin's up and available. I, I I just think Deckard on this map is so, so strong. So I just get rid of that unless... No, they don't plan to take it themselves. Yeah. And this makes sense because the reason I'm, I'm harping about this is because you have potion set up. You have super potions. You have um, bottomless flask at level 20. Not only that, at level 4, you have Ruby, which is going to provide three potions that heal for roughly 95% of your regular potion, and you get three potions per hero hit with the Haradra Cube. So let's say you you land a massive, massive five-member Haradra Cube with Ruby applied, you're getting 15 potions on the ground. That's insanity. It's so much healing out on the, on, on the ground, so much floor juice. So they'll ban out the Garrosh, though. They don't want to deal with a Warlord's Challenge, Stukov, Chromie sort of deal, which makes a lot of sense. I, 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 like, this, I like this combo together. Or at least I like that denial into this combo. Things like um, Joan are still up and available. Available. You can rip a blessed shield and set up Chromie. You can go for Murden with the consistent storm bows, storm bolts. Um, I actually kind of like the Murden to shut down the Diva boost. 
and you can get free stacks into them as well with those hammers, but it's going to be Urel and Greymane. They're going to hold their main tank for now. I think they want to see like the rest of the draft to determine who's going to be their main tank because that might have a, some sort of drive. Not decision. I'm blanking on the word right now because I've had one sport beer. But uh, <laughs> overall, I think I think it's just they're considering what the rest of the enemy team draft will be and how that's going to affect the the main tank pick. So let's see here. May, Li Meng, Diva. They still need more damage and healing. It's going to be Cassie and Anduin. Okay, the Anduin makes sense to me. Anduin overall had buffs in the last patch, which was yesterday. Cassia blinds into the Grey Man are good, so that at least denies a little bit of the the worgen value. But what do they do to shut this down? Uh, I like the Murden still. I really do. I like the. I, I I think he's got so much utility. And honest to God, no Kappa. I think you go Haymaker. You go massive displacement, <laughs> or you just go Stitches and just kidnap him. I don't know. I really don't know what they're gonna take here. Arthas, really, huh? Uh, I guess into the Diva does slow the auto attack speed, sets you up for the Gray Main, sets up the Chromie. I'm not the biggest Arthas fan, but I can see how this works with the draft. I just think over the other tanks that we have available in our in our pool, I'm not the bit. I don't lean into Arthas too much here, but I think it can be really strong. Like I I, I see the direction they want to go with this, but I just feel like the Murd and Joanna is, is is a little bit stronger here. But well, hey, we're gonna load into game, and I'm not the one playing it, so they're the ones who actually have to figure out how to actually win with this. When did Kaldor grow a beard? Never. <laughs> How you doing, Rob Christie? Thank you for the 17 months. Holy crap. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my friend. I hope you're doing well. You can't stop Tuna? Hmm. Well, we'll see what happens. I'm excited to see Tuna. Good day, Rob Christie. Thanks for coming by. Bearing? Hmm? Much better draft for any Oak League for this game. I agree, Geo. I think any Oak League has a good draft. I think, though, they lack a little bit in CC. Like, yes, Anduin has Chastise... May has Blizz, like, I, I don't know, like, I think there's there's not enough to lock someone down for a burst kill, but I could be wrong in that. Let's go ahead and get into game number two on the left-hand side. We have the members of Randy Newman. We've got Tuna Newman on the Grey Main. We have got Wandy Woman on the Arthas. Randy Newman on the Stukoff. Uh, Nandy Ruman on the Urel. And Randy Newman on the Chromie. A couple roll swaps right there. Wendy Ruman in the last game was the Rainer. And Randy Newman over here on this Chromie was the ETC, so... Little, little, little changes right there. On the right-hand side, we have the members of Annie Oak League. We've got Vince Noir on the Li Ming. Gola is going to be on the May. Galleon will be on the Anduin. Transformers will be on the... Or excuse me, Transformer will be on the Cassia. And Diva will be played by Yatre. Let's get in the mid lane, check out our level ones, and see what our engagement will look like. Uh, hey, Bahamut, who is your favorite Randy Newman and why is it Randy Nudeman? Because Randy Nudeman has probably one of the best spellings because it's... Nudeman, but it kind of sounds like Newman. It's close enough, but it's also like slightly lewd. I actually agree with you. It's a, it's a good one. Anyways, that's going to be a Howling Blast landing onto one. They did go into Frost Presence at level one as well, so they're going to be landing those Howling Blasts for the two rewards. Now, I do believe the rewards go in this order where it's uh, you... Now, I don't remember the specific numbers, but I believe it's uh, you get Howling Blast extended length. God, that that verbiage right there, and you uh, and then you get the uh, roots along path, I believe, right? Oh wait, hold on, sorry. So you get cooldown reduction, then you get the increased range, then you get the uh, rooting and path. Excuse me, but it's going to be a total of twenty stacks of that howling blast that Wendy Woman will want to land here. We do have Diva in bottom lane up against Randy Newman. Excuse me, sorry about that, everybody. I had that issue in CCL where I kept accidentally like clicking and then clicking to the side and, and moving the camera super awkwardly and jumping it regardless two to two in levels. And we just have rotations. Oh, wait, no, we have an invade tuna looking to go in with the worgen form with the dark flight, but the chastise from Galleon. So on point is that's a, mud, a bunch of Newman's running onto this point trying to get this uh, fortification camp and they managed to do so but does this turn around is this too advantageous for them nandy ruman is going to be trying to back off as they are blind and just so much thrown onto them but this is what i'm talking about a little bit here there's not enough cc and control in these fights to really lock them down and punish them i think that there should have been at least one punish there into the enemy team uh with just like the burst damage that they have but no one sat still long enough for transformers or vince noir to be able to land the damage succinctly. Like, they had Galleon with a Chastise, great. 
what else is there? And, I'm, and I know I'm harping on this a little too much, maybe, but I think that's that's the one thing that, as I look at this draft, I feel like they're lacking in CC, and they're lacking in that CC to land a kill. Randy Newman in this, or excuse me, Nandy Newman in this bottom lane is going to do their best to, well, play into a D.Va, but I think the D.Va might have their number, at least when it comes to sustained damage. This is going to actually still be Dauntless at level 1, so 35 physical armor after using an ability, but I don't know, D.Va's sustained damage is, is really, really rough to deal with, and then don't forget they did go into um, full metal at level 1, one, which, if I'm not mistaken, is going to be damage increase. No, no, no. Gains 10% increased health and his fusion cannons heal. That's what it is. Okay. I'm still relearning all the diva changes, and I honestly didn't commit to them uh, from the initial uh, uh, rework because usually, usually a character gets reworked and then there's massive adjustments that come in uh, a little bit later, and that can actually be said for Gaslow. I don't know if anyone's played the new Gaslow, new, new Gaslow that got released yesterday. If any, does it, how does people feel about it? Is Did he get buffed enough? That's my big question is, did he get buffed enough? If you go to Glogan stream, I'm sure it's buffed enough, but if you go to someone who's actually like not Glogan and doesn't know how to play them properly <laughs> all the time, maybe it might be a little different. Like I'm actually curious to see like here, like Epic Player and Cattle, because they played Gazlo a ton when it got released. And they were kind of for it, it seemed, but I never saw it in CCL, but I get why people don't want to play it in CCL. Yo, by the way, don't be cowards in CCL. Play Murky. It's the final exhibition weekend. You got to make a name for yourself. And I'm dead serious in that, in that, in that right there. Because here's the thing, and I said this beforehand, I'll say it again. If an organization finds out there's a Murky game out of 12, guess which game they're going to go watch first? Like, let's say Turk is like, I got to go watch a couple of these games, see who I want to pick for the upcoming weekend draft. And there's a Murky game? I'm going to go check out that one first. Honest to God, I want to know how the Murky player did. Anyway, sorry, I'm, I'm so CCL tangent side focused right now. We have this point being contested by both sides, seven to seven in levels, and let's see who's able to take this as Gola. <clears throat> we'll have the icing in. There's going to be Holly Glass coming out from one. I believe that was Gladiator's Medallion used from Wandy Woman as Randy Newman is going to be backing off, drawing the, dropping the Biotic Emitter in their favor as the uh, Cryo Freeze will be used by Gola. They're getting low Righteous Hammer from Nandy Ruman will, will knock them back as that will be a mecha explosion, but here's the thing. They're able just to walk right away from that. No big deal as the objective phase continues to go up in favor for Randy Newman and friends as Nandy Ruman is is just eating damage on the Shirel, but they're just able to walk away because, well, it's Shirel. Overtime will be uh, procced right there, and I think they're going to get this back over as they are a little bit low in mana health. So they're just back off, cycle out, and jump back onto this point. But this will be channel availability for the side of Annie Oak League as Wendy is going to be just throwing this er, damage in. Wendy, excuse me, I believe it is. Nandy Newman. Ruman is going to be doing their best to just displace everyone with a righteous hammer. And I think this is actually going to be Trigla Protector for Annie Oak League. Really, really well played over the subjective phase, punishing the Arthas who stepped way too far forward right there. And this will be eight up on both sides. Let's go ahead and cycle through those other numbers, get an idea of what those look like, as I would expect this Trigloff to be fairly similar to what we normally see. You get a little bit of damage in this front gate in mid, and then you rotate to top lane and you focus on this upper portion well. The reason being is you want to get rid of the lane sustain during the next objective phase. If I'm not mistaken, it's a three minute cooldown from when the Trigloff Protector goes down to when the next objective is up and available for contest. So. The reason I was also talking about this upper portion of the lane is because you want to try and take out the wall and the tower from this upper area so that way you're not tanking extra damage from one of the lower towers. It doesn't seem to be too big of an issue for them as they're able to get exactly what I described, and this will be control point B a little bit more so in their favor. I think we should be somewhere in the 7 minute 30 or 8 minute mark in the game. It's either 2 minute 30 or 3 minutes. I never remember on Volskaya Foundry. Either way, we're going to be approaching that control point B. Up until then, it's going to be trying to find level 10 and then typically level 13 as well. There's a lot of standards for, for some of the maps, and uh, this one, like, typically, like, level 7 is our first objective phase, level 13-ish is our second objective phase, and then level 17 area is typically our third objective phase of this map. And then after that, it just becomes full chaos, because if you don't end the game by control point C, what are you, what are you even doing in Here's a Storm? I'm lying, I'm lying. There's so many games I've casted that have gone to the control point A for the second time. Like, it's it, we're on our sixth Trigla Protector or something like that, or seventh, I guess you could really call it. But I want to also go ahead and note that we do have Go for the Throat for the Gray Man and a couple people holding their talent still. Diva holding and Anduin holding. Do we actually see Bunny Hop? Sindragosa was grabbed by the Arthas. That's a big thing to note, too. Not Army of the Dead. There's been some Arthas players that I've interviewed in the past and said, you take Sindragosa when you're memeing and you take Army of the Dead when you want to win. We'll see if that's the case here, if Randy Newman is going to have a different 
thought in that. Hey Bahamas, same question as uh, Big Doo Doo Head 69, but why is it Randall Newman? Hmm, Mustache Carl. I don't know. I, I gotta say, maybe that's my second favorite because there's no nude in the name. It's not lewd enough. Turk managed to make Gazzo look good. When you say manage, do you mean like easily? That's gonna be a light bomb, a lot coming out. Ice wall, excuse me, it was, uh, excuse me, yeah, ice wall was used. That will be Arthas, the first one to go down. They're gonna try and turn this around. I'm surprised that Greymane actually went for the throat but didn't find a kill. Transformer is so low, but they don't go down. Ardent Defender to be used by the URL. Do they have a right to Sammer to do anything? They don't. The Hand of Freedom won't be able to be used, and that is gonna be a triple kill for the members of. Oh, the slowing stands was ended. Um, triple kill though for the members of any Oak League, as they, as they themselves find a solid level lead over the side of Randy Newman. Excuse me. Why is there no Randy Ludman? That is probably one of the best questions of the night to ask. Why isn't there? Why isn't there a Randy Ludman? Randy Newman's? Hmm. Golden opportunity missed. Absolute gold missed. You didn't place silver, you didn't place bronze, you got fourth. No, <laughs> sorry. 11 to 13 in our levels, as this is what I was talking about beforehand, we typically see the 13s around, around control point B. And for the first time in this game, we are, or I guess in this series, we are going to be seeing Annie Oak League with the momentum in their favor as Randy Ruman, excuse me, Nandy Ruman is going to be trying to 1v3 casually, but it is Urel, and that also allows them to maybe get onto this point. But the big thing still just looms over this entire match. There's a half a level and then some for the members of Randy Newman to be able to get to that 13 talent tier. Randy Newman is going to be sitting on this edge and Yatra is going to be over here on the uh, uh, other kind of corner, I guess you could say. They're going to throw out those micro missiles to try and pressure out the Arthas as uh, Yurel and friend is going to be grabbing the camp over here. This won't push them to 13, so Yurel grabs another wave in the bottom lane. This won't be Triglaw Protector for free, so they're going to try and pressure into the top lane to maybe whittle down this fort. Slowing Sands on on Transformers, excuse me, Transformer. Howling Blast connecting onto one is at 13 out of the 20 stacks. They do have the increased ranged and the cooldown reduction, but at 20 they get the uh, route along path. So that's a the big benefit to kind of catch a couple people as this will be 13 talent tier up. That's Randy, excuse me, Nandy Ruman coming in here as there's a light bomb from Galleon that will go off, catching a couple. Arthas is going to drop the Cindergosa. Mecha Explosion comes out. Nandy Ruman is going to drop them back with the Righteous Hammer, but they turn into the Mecha Explosion with the Ardent Defender and find some health, but they end up going down. That's a reset for Lee a one-for-one one trade as the Anduin was picked off. Now, this is going to be the Anduin for Urel, so it's going to be frontline for kind of backline as that's a dive in 57 seconds on the go for the throat for Tuna as they're doing their best to razor swipe through this. They roll to disengage away. They get some armor, and I think that might have saved them from the burst from Vince, but this is... Control point B, excuse me, going over to no one at this point. He's great, man. Dives in the back line, finds one kill right there. They're going to force the blink out from Vince as they end up getting the snipe with the sand. This is the members of Randy Newman turning things around in a drastic moment. Nice concussive blast from Yatre as they had the good to go talent from level 13, and that gives you that concussive pulse. If they didn't have that right there, the sustained chase from Tuna Newman would have been enough, and they would have found another kill. Death timers are not that low. Keep that in mind. So we could be seeing a re Regress onto this objective phase. Yatre is going to grab this with Galleon. Gola going to go ahead and hearth back. And you just saw it for a second. The value from Time Walker's Pursuit, they managed to s s not sneak out. Gain the vision, or I guess gain the knowledge of where the enemy team is. It's totally, it's totally just the the knight progressing. That's that's what's throwing off the casting. Totally. <laughs> Big dude you had over here just trying to. <laughs> Sorry, I missed my mouse for a second. Um, big dude you had in chat just literally recruiting for the Randy Newman team roster organization. Sindragosa coming out from the Arthas is going to catch onto one. Goal is going to be that initial target. Yatra in the back line is trying to thro throw out some damage as the Ice Wall comes out from May. That is going to be the Triglop Protector going down, but also going down is Greymane trading out the Lee Ming as there's going to be so much damage onto Nandy Ruman who's going to dive away, but the Lightning Fury is enough and here's the issue. Ladies and gentlemen, 
the Urel could have actually gotten this Triglav Protector. They actually, well, maybe not because <laughs> the Kromi just took so much damage. I don't know. There was a possibility because there's no interrupt for the pilot to get in. There's only a interrupt for the gunner to get in. So the gunner's the, obviously the person who's not in the other half of the Triglav Protector is there's Wendy Woman going down, Randy Newman. I don't know if you make it out of this one, but as they throw the, the weighted pushel backwards, Gola with the icing is going to find four kills. The Triglav Protector is pretty much moot at this point. They do get it, but they don't win out too much overall. I will say this though, this was a 15 to 16 talent tier fight and they still won it over. So it still is a bit of a benefit. And I think there was a there was a thought from Chromie for a second, like, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and just push into bottom lane. They're like, no, you'll be overextended. So this should be double fort in favor for the members of Annie Oak League. Realistically, I'm gonna be honest here. They didn't get the trig love, but they got trig love value. Chromie's in this bot. This is risky. This is super risky for the Chromie. The enemy team's coming in in here in a flank position. There's 10 seconds left on the Strigla Protector. 50-some percent of its health left as well. So they've got a bit of that chunk to get out of here. But this is risky. Yatre is going to be coming in here. Transformer. I'm waiting for the Trigla Protector to go down. They do have, it does have a little bit of a burst back as Nandy Ruman jumps in and is gonna eat so much damage that was meant for Chromie. They do get the well sniped in bottom. Tuna coming down here as well, 16 to 17, even talent tiers, full 5v5 fight. Do we actually see it pop off or is this just gonna be poke pressure onto bottom lane fort? What's up, Grace? I accept the honorary position. Who picked the map? Map? I'm sorry, it was uh, Randy Newman. The losing team from the previous game was Annie Oak League, and they opted for first pick priority, which gave Randy Newman map pick priority, and they chose Volskaya. First game was Infernal Shrines, and that was the map pick priority from the coin flip winners, which was Annie Oak League. I hope that gives you the information you're looking for, Giggle. Thanks for coming by. Camps to be grabbed on the left and right side fairly quickly, actually, and almost simultaneously. Uh, we're approaching 20s. I want to cycle through the other numbers again, get you all an idea of what that damage experience and healing is looking like for our game number two. And can any Oak League take us to a game three? I will say this, chat. It seems like it. The members of Randy Newman are losing some steam after game number one or the draft. I don't know what it is, but like this is a different Annie Oak League in game number two. They're finding good kills. They're finding good kill pressure, map pressure, lane pressure overall. This is their game to, well, keep the momentum going. I'm not going to say the other thing. Because <laughs> I feel like that's too much of a caster curse. Oh my god, such good emotes coming through. Thank you, Grace. All right, five to nine in kills, 18's up. Um, I'm just skimming through some of these other numbers because I'm not getting a chance too often. Mm, good healing, actually. Really good healing. Stukov with 56,000, Andy with 49,000, roughly. Ah, uh, 57 versus 49. A little bit of rounding. There is a solid level lead still. A kill or two would yield that, but I think what the members of Antioch Oak League are kind of turtling up a little bit, like they're not playing too far aggressive across the entire map, so mostly just looking for the waves to crash into them and slowly get into their 20 talent tier area, but it's not easy to do. You want to kind of you, you kind of want to step into these waves and, and rush it and, f and burn things down as uh, Nandy Rumen's going to do their best to walk out of this when they might not have hand of freedom off a cooldown as ball lightning comes out. There's going to be some micro missiles and Nandy Rumen's going to go down to about half health. Gets a pustule out from the Stukov as control point C opens up for availability. What are our camp timers looking like? Nothing in the top lane is really up and available outside of waves. And this is what I was talking about beforehand. They are looking. Oh, wait, no. Howling Glass is going to be coming in. They need to take the fight now before the 20 talent tier happens. And that's going to be a wonderful leap of faith coming out from Galleon. But unfortunately, there was a displacement from Vince that anti synergized with the ice wall, which would have had set up for a potential kill with this post 20 just kicking through. Now, with all of that happening they do force them to take a bit of a slower rotation to this bottom that will buy some time for them to find 20 talent tier it's still a level to go it's it's a is this is a rough spot to be in i don't really mm, they are splitting across the map and doing their best to pull experience it's gonna be a time walker's pursuit just to catch the vision in the rotation in case the enemy team is hiding because they are not on the point. There's no channel progressing in their favor and the members of Annie Oak League are looking to just take this fight. That's gonna be a howling blast that connects. Yatra is gonna be trying to bop people around. There's gonna be a root onto one. There's going to be so much on to Nandy Room and they do have the art defender up and available and they pop that immediately as the Cindergosa comes through. That's going to also be the body commander on the ground as that will be the pick onto your own. Flailing swipe doesn't force them back. They did not have the 20 yet so they don't have the controlled chaos to utilize the, uh, uh, the, the 
controlled literal flailing swipes because you get three of them versus the three in a row that you get from the 10 talent tier. But what an amazing rotation coming up from Annie Oak League to shut down this top lane. But do they turn it around as Chromie dumps out some damage? There's going to be a lurking arm with the Virilind Root, I believe is the name from level 13. So they got the weighted pushtil detonated on top of the lurking arm and they got that root down onto the other player as well. They're doing a good job sustaining this, but D.Va just now jumping back onto the point is going to have channel in favor for the red team. The issue with all of this is that D.Va was so slow in the rotation down here that it gave so much time for Yorel to respawn and there's 16 seconds left, 50% left on the Shriglaw Protector uh, channel time. And this is also going to delay things out to the point where Randy Newman and friends will find their 20 talent here in this. So they do have an opportunity to turn things around and jump on this point, but they have to go fast. They need to be on this point like already because this is going to be 80 some percent rising you can see them there's a little bit of a delay from tuna because they're moving through the enemy minion wave and that means that they're going to be showing wandy woman is this yeah okay they're, they're going to back off i think they're realizing this is too desperate and that's a good call because even me in my own voice i was like oh they gotta go for it but i'm like well you know what this is getting desperate bahamut you should maybe shut up and they're going to go ahead and back off now the issue with this is this is trigla protector c this is hitting fairly hard and a lot of teams typically end games with this but that's usually ending games with a couple kills and the Triglov moving through the bottom lane, blah, blah, blah. So they need to get a kill or two here first. They need to also take down the keep and then they can go for core. But this Triglov protector already losing a lot of its health, 70% and falling as they get about a third of the keep right now. Ball lightning goes out into one and this is going to be no infinite ball lightning at level 20. So they don't get cooldown reduction. That's going to be the full cooldown for ball lightning right now as the keep is looking a little bit low. Triglov protector still with one minute left and 37% of its health left as well. They move in to try and step into this enemy team as Wandy is going to be getting low. Micro Missiles coming out from Yatre. Transformers with the Light Bomb won't connect onto anyone. The Trigla Protector is getting low, but so is Wandy. They do have the uh, Ardent Defender. Oh my god, no, sorry. I misread the model as that is actually going to be Arthas walking back in with a sliver of health. They're onto the core. No shielding left. There's going to be the core defense pushing someone back. May's going to be going down first. Go for the throat. Came out from the Grey Mane. Keep in mind, they have the level 20 talent tier upgrade as the glove from the core actually forced them forces back the mech, but now they turn and they find the Arthas. This is going to be a two for one and they're looking at the core again Randy Newman getting low Tuna Newman looking for a target Randy Newman on that chromie backing off as Grayman tries to lunge in looking for some sort of kill there's going to be displacement coming out from this Li Ming with the wave of force from 10 they did go into the uh, repulsion actually at level 20 is they actually have the massive disengage value but Randy Newman's so very low on this chromie and they're gonna find the gray main kill on the opposing side and ladies and gentlemen we head to a game number three with Randy Newman going down in game number two GG well played I gotta catch my breath, holy crap. That's what y'all wanted, right? Y'all wanted game three. I honestly wasn't even watching the core health that entire time. Wild. As I said, they they played that early aggression. It worked out for them so well. They shut down Urel more than expected. They shut down Arthas quite a bit too. Really good game. Um, I was harping about the whole lack of CC, but you know, sometimes you don't need CC if you just win the team fight. Oh, thank you so much, Captain Braille. I appreciate that, my friend. Thank you for the compliment. That was that was sick, GG's. Yeah, thank you, thank you. GG's to the teams as well, but we're not done just yet. We have a game, number three, to go into. How's today's casting of the Newmans going? Enjoyable. We might have, we might have, we might have opened a sports beer or two. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, Annie Oak League drafted so much better for themselves game two. I agree. I agree. I, I I was harping on the lack of CC from them, but it it seems like I'd say I'd say 13 to 16 was a big, big, big win for them. Oh my God, Grace, thank you for gifting a sub to uh, Valera. Enjoy your asthma pogs, your Baja rages, your uh, your finger guns, your your Baja and bandit sips, your your Baja and bandit pachas. 
Uh, I might hire my emote artists. Well, not mine, but I might hire the emote artist that did the bandit sips to do a uh, Cho'Gall. Like a uh, Bahamut Cho'Gall with a bandit. I have to I, I don't know if it will work out, though. That's the only issue is like it's that's kind of a big emote to do. And I don't know if it's going to read well, so I have to ask them. But either way, cheeky bit of beer, eh, just a wee bit. I basically I told the teams like I made a joke about it in the in the coin flip. I was like, because one of them was like, oh, our, one of our players is going to be like a wee bit late. So, oh, thank you for mentioning that to me. Wonderful. OK, interesting. Um, sorry, someone DM me for a little information of the game choice stuff. Either way, I lost my train of thought completely. Oops, no, no, please stop, sir. This is a Wendy's. All right, there we go. Oh, yes, the Chogal, the Chogal Bahamut. I think it'd be adorable. We have to just have to see if it would work out. Would you be the Cho or the Gull? Hmm. Um, purely because everyone makes the joke when I walk Bandit, I would say that Bandit would be Cho and I would be Gull. Because literally, like, when I take a... I take Bandit on the same loop every single day. Twice a day, almost. So, like, most of the neighbor... Most of the people in my neighborhood know my dog's name over mine. <laughs> I want you to know that. Uh, and they always make the joke, like, is your dog walking you or are you walking it? Because I, I don't really walk Bandit on leash because our neighborhood in the back doesn't have sidewalks. And it's only the people who live in the neighborhood who really drive through there. So... And I have a whole system with Bandit. Like, we step off the road when the car comes. Anyways, the whole thing is, is it'd be funny if Cho was Bandit because he'd be driving the bus. Uh, whoa, no, thank you for gifting a sub to Tiny Naughty, I think it is. Thank you, thank you, thank you for gifting that sub, my friend. Tiny, enjoy your, your, all of your emotes, all of your wonderful emotes. Um, since we're getting into game number three, I'm going to run the full stinger again because I really like it. So, bop. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to the Nexus Gaming Series. My name is Bahamut. We find ourselves here on map number three in our final best of three of the evening. If you're sitting at home wondering how we got here, I got you covered. The members of the Randy Newmans are going to lose the coin flip initially, banning out Battlefield and Dragonshire. Any Oak League opting for map pick priority for game number one will ban out Towers of Doom and Tomb of the Spider Queen. They opted for uh, Infernal Shrines for game number one and lost that. As the losing team, they could either choose for first pick or map pick. They opted for first pick for game two, and Randy Newman opted to take us to Volskaya. Randy Newman and friends lost that map. As the losing team, Randy Newman and friends can choose map pick or first pick, and they chose map pick, choosing to take us to Curse Hall. Let's get into our draft. No Chogal ban so far. No Chogal ban so far. Uh, if a game lasts 60 plus minutes, then it's an official tie. What? What? Wait, what? What? I don't know of any Heroes of Storm game that goes that has ever gone to 60 minutes. I, I think the, the highest I've ever heard is like 45, 40, 40 to 45 minutes, I think. The longest I've ever been in is roughly, I think, 35 to 38 minutes. And it was a Tomb of the Spider Queen game. And I blame my friend Jeff because he never knows how to end games. But that was ages ago. Tatsuki, how was your stream? How did you how did you fare uh, beating up people in the Nexus? I saw you had some good you had some good Storm League games and you had some Storm League games. May on the right hand side will once again be grabbed. Uh, they're gonna initially grab this Diva. What do they grab with it? A Garrosh. Now this Garrosh has been ba uh, excuse me. <clears throat> This Garrosh has been banned out consistently throughout the evening against them, so we're going to be able to see the members of Randy Newman finally grab the Garrosh that they've been, well, having banned against them consistently throughout the night. May will be the first pick. Cursed Hollow was going to be Li Ming. Okay, I don't I don't disagree with this. Poke potential is big for them. Do they try and grab the Greymane for themselves? No, they're going to grab a Lucio for a lot of harassment, a lot of speed boost, and a lot of sustain chase or disengage. I like that quite a bit. Ron is lying? Yeah, that's what I thought. 
You had a bunch of Storm League games? I'm sorry, Totski. Oh, no. Totsky, no. Uh, <laughs> Bandwise are going to be seeing the side of Randy Newman first here. Uh, the opposing side, they need something in the solo lane. They need, uh, actually, like a Dahaka ban wouldn't be bad at all if they don't plan to take it themselves. But they're going to get rid of the Malfeel. Okay. I don't disagree with it. I wonder if they're going to lean into a global, though, because it's we're going to Cursed Hollow. It's a large map, and having that brush dock or even flight from Falstead could be big. So maybe they're just too unsure of what global they might prioritize, or they have someone who can play both. But either way, that'll be Stukov banned out. And I think this actually forces the uh, the Randy Newman Stukov player to actually play something different because we saw Stukov in game one and game two, if I'm not mistaken. Game one for sure. Or excuse me. Game two for certain. Game one, I'm not sure. Uh, I legit don't know who to root for here. Root for Bandit. When you're unsure, root for Bandit. Diva Garrosh, they still need a healer. They still need a lot of extra damage. I wasn't ready for an Abathur, but it will apply some global pressure onto the map with the Locust. But here's the issue that I was talking about beforehand. If you're going to go into this Abathur, why didn't you ban out the Dahaka? Dahaka is considered a really strong counter into Abathur because of the amount of push pressure Dahaka can literally put into a lane. The other thing to consider here is, do they Vikings? Do they have a Vikings player on the side of Annie Oak League? This is a great map for them. You literally split across the map 4v5. And you know there's going to be a 4v4 consistently. Regardless, they're going to go for the 4v5 and they're looking at the Thrall Leoric. I, this means you, bas you basically have a, a bruiser slash tank for every lane, and you have a Leeming Lucio who can freely move between lanes. Thrall lane might be a little weaker when it comes to the tankiness of it, but you still have Thrall able to step into a lot of these players, and it will consistently be a 4v whatever up until level 10 when you have ultimate evolution, if they go ultimate evolution. I, I wouldn't, ex okay. It's not solo heal Uther, or not, uh, excuse me, it's not solo heal Abathur, which I thought it could be. Big old pile of you guys, okay. I don't know what they're saying in this draft chat. Either way, I'm excited about this. No Anduin makes me scared? Why is that? This is civil war. This civil war is an abomination. Why do you say that? Why is this an abomination? Four man thrall trash lightning, let's go. Hold on. Let me let me use my let me use my tier three emotes for all of you. In my own in my own channel here. There you go. Is this what you want? Is that what you want in chat? My trash lightning emote, <laughs> which is just Keck W on the trash lightning. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm slightly proud of that. Uh, that actually might be what goes or I don't know. I have to figure out what goes or. I might have enough sub points for a new emote slot. I'm just remembering. I don't know. Either way, let's find out what happens with the game, because that's a little bit more important on the left hand side. We have the members of Randy Newman. We have Randy Newman on the Garrosh, Nandy Ruman on the Diva, Tuna Newman on the Dia Diablo, on the Greymane, uh, Randy Newman on the Abathur, and uh, Wandy Woman on the. Uther. On the right hand side, we have the members of Annie Oak League. We have got Gola on the May. Vince Noir will be on that Li Ming. Transform will be on the Thrall. Galleon will be on the Lucio and Yatre on the Lior. Excuse me. That emote is sick. I actually, you know what's funny is I moved it from, I think it was like, I think it was tier one and it just slowly moved into tier two or three. I can't remember, but either way, um, I don't know, it's just, it's, 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 it's an undervalued talent. Like Chen W. Chen W actually might have to go to make room for Cho'Gal. I'm not sure. All I see is a pickle wreck and I'm nervous. Anyways, let's get, let's let's look at this. Uh, it is going to be Crash Lightning for the Thrall. And for anyone who's been in my chat before and knows this, we like to keep track. So, chat, one out of 30. There you go. On the left-hand side, though, for the Uther, they're going to be going to Silver Touch. So they're going to be building that up to get the Holy Light mana cost reduction and range increase as well. Meanwhile, in mid lane, it looks like May is going to go down and that'll be first blood in favor for the side of Randy Newman and friends as the Nexus forces are a little too OP. Randy Newman in bottom lane versus Yatre, but they're going to need someone else to come down here. It's not going to be Greymane because they're literally going to need the hat from Abathur to finish out this camp or Wandy Woman has to come over here to help out as well. Oh, so some Pickle Ricks and some uh, Evil Mortys. Okay. You got one pickle, Rick. Out yeah, there, you go. <laughs> oh, 
Uh, Nematode, thank you for coming by. I hope you're having a wonderful night. By the way, uh, Nematode, I believe you had the really, really good Vala plays on Tuesday night that I got to cast. So thank you for, um, thank you for literally playing an amazing Vala. Like, it was really fun to watch. Um, you actually had some really clutch mobility and, and just damage moments just be able to... And posturing is the word I'm looking for. You had some really good posturing and just an overall damage dump into the enemy team that... Alterac pass game was, I think, really well played on your end. Anyways, that's going to be uh, forced of force use of the dear lord of the cryo freeze from Golas. They're going to heal up a little bit from there, but they're slowly being whittled down. Randy Newman and Wandy Woman. I mean, it is an Uther and a Garrosh, but they do deal damage slowly but surely. And the mini wave is kind of helping that out as Lucio now amps it up, as you can kind of see that boost around them as Gola is going to get some healing. And our first objective will be announced here in 15 seconds and will be up for availability on of contest at three minutes into the game so roughly 40 seconds from now abather doing the best to push out this bottom lane but here is the issue it's just abather that's it that's my <laughs> that's my flat plane issue is that they have no one down here right now to push up against this leoric and yes abather can push things back with the uh the hat and everything but it's not going to clear faster than a leoric and this is also Li ming going to stall out this objective i actually mm, I'm 50-50 on this stall out. I actually don't know. I don't know where this will land in lane because the big thing that I, I, I always like to prioritize here is having these siege giants pressuring the lane. Seems like Leoric is just getting free push in bottom lane and Yatra are going to respect this. They're going to back off. I was waiting to see if they hit a bunch of those mines. They're not going to. Siege giants will be getting the lane. Oh, this is a little bit of the later side for me. I think I would like this a little bit faster so that way the, the siege giants are kind of pressured during the objective phase. Um, now they're just kind of in lane during it. Also to note, Abathur might be showing in lane. I'm not 100% sure of this let's actually check they might have shown for a split second either way though they will be trying to physically soak that lane but they do back off for a second or two as galleon goes for the channel vince is looking to throw out some poke damage just to force back the enemy team as the groundbreaker comes out from garage they did go into titanic might at level one Excuse me, that's the 20 talent here. Unrivaled strength at level one so they're getting the throw range and the damage increase from that one no um warlords not warlords challenge dear lord Warbreaker from the Garrosh at level 1. Wraith walk forward. Yeah, I was about to say, Yatra, you got one auto and that's all you needed. That'll be first blood, excuse me. First blood for the side of any Oak League in our game number 3 on Cursed Hollow. Excuse me, everybody. Next objective will be in the top right of the map. This will be friendly side for our Annie Oak League as Randy Newman and friends. They have even talent tiers. The experience deficit's really not that massive between either side. Abathur doing their best, but here's the thing. Yatra is just getting free pressure into bottom. So Tuna wants to punish this with the Abathur hat. Seems like they're going to focus onto the Siege Giants first. But here's the issue. Leork is... They, they have... They have 5v4 consistently, so Leork never technically has to show to an objective for it still to be an even talent to your fight. And that's that's the thing that I'm kind of just still stuck on in my mind. Like, yeah, I was talking about Vikings early, which is cheeky and might counter the Abathur, but they're literally just like, cool, we'll just side pushes. That's going to be Thrall going down. Just to note, 4 out of the 30 stacks of Crash Lightning? Yes. Okay, phew. Sorry, I'm skimming, I'm skimming chat really quickly as Vince blinks away. There's no actual stun from Wandy. I was waiting, I was, I was expecting the blink, to, or not the blink, the uh, hammer of justice to go on to Vince Noir, but right now this is such a split fight. Tuna trying to find some sort of damage that you get a little bit of healing and some armor from the Uther as Galleon uses the push off, but they're gonna get stunned by the Uther. It's not enough damage because Tuna's being split. Yatre has the auto to get the kill. Greyman uses the go for the not the go for the throw he uses the dark flight to jump onto a minion but there was the spectral leech from the leork to allow them to be able to still sustain that damage onto gray main and then i'll push them up a little bit further when it comes to experience let's go ahead and cycle through the numbers get an idea of what those look like five stacks on crash lightning two on frost wolf pack no invade onto the boss no boss for themselves and this is looking real comfortable for any oak league in game number three Good night, Tort, or good night, Tort. Uh, thank you for the follow. Glad you're enjoying the content that you see on screen. How you doing, Apocalypse? Ten talents here will be here first for the side of Annie Oak League, and since they grab their own boss, they're going to try and make the invade. Looks like the icing comes through, and Gola sees that there's no one on this boss, so 
They know Diva's up there. They know that this is basically a 3v5 because Abathur still doesn't have ultimate evolution. Diva's, as I said, showing in top, but seems like they might want to take the fight over the boss. I personally say you go boss here. You don't really have much stopping you. you got a lot of tools as well. Ice Wall's great. Earthquake's great. Either way, maybe they're going to look for a stagger death right now as the 10 talent here comes through. That's going to be Lucio amping it up. There's also going to be the Entomb from Leoric. They're going to throw back Golo. There's going to be an Earthquake from Thrall. There's going to be a Warlord's Challenge. They're going to dive onto Yatri, but the power, excuse me, the break it down will be enough. They don't have Wraithwalk. They're still in this, this shit, to be honest, as Greymane goes for the throw, finds the kill. Tuna should have one more auto, and they find the double kill, triple kill into the Lee Ming. Wandy's so very low, but the, can they turn things around with the Abra their hat? Unfortunately not. Ghost Heal's out from Uther, will be available. Gola's the only one left. The boop boosts through, and they're gonna find a pentakill on the side of Randy Newman, giving over Uther only. Not the way things were going to go in my thought, or not the way I expected things to go. There we go. Uh, but overall, that ended up working out fairly well for Randy Newman and friends. Like, it seemed like any Oak League had the better posturing, had the better advantage, had the better just everything in that fight. But it was just a slight overextension that Ice Wall just really kind of split the entire fight. And we are going to be seeing, as I said, Pentakill for Randy Newman and friends, which bolster their experience quite a bit. What is the actual experience gained from that? 4,756. Now, not, I mean, they had a couple kills beforehand, so we're probably somewhere in the 3,800 area, but that still is a big old chunk of experience that pushes them ahead in their actual talent tier range as they'll approach 13s faster in their favor. This is going to be a denial of curse in favor for the side of Randy Newman and friends. This will put them in the advantage spot, so they have two to two out of three, and they'll be matched by the enemy side. Wendy Woman already setting up on that left-hand side, and they should be able to get this without any contest. Leork is coming in. They could look to poke at this. Seems like they want to go for the fight over the actual delay, so they're going to eat the curse. Well, the... Not going to eat really anything. <laughs> They're going to be like, cool, it's not cursed for them. We give it over. We defend boss. Boss in top right will be 2 minutes and 24. Boss in bottom left is 4 minutes and something. We have Siege Giants up and available. We have Bruiser Camps up in 2 minutes. And the left side's already up. A lot happening on our map already. Overall, that worked out fairly well for Randy Newman. Um, yeah. What are you trying to say? What are you trying to say? What are you trying to say? Sometimes words are hard. <laughs> I love you, chat. All right, uh, 13 talent here should be coming through in just a second for the members of Antioch League. Uh, what's their boss at? 143 still. Abathur's doing a great job of pressuring out the lanes. They do have Mule from level 7, so I'm assuming they're just kind of using that off a of cooldown on any structure that, well, re realistically needs it. But now, Heroics are up and available. The only one that's not is the Micro Missiles for D.Va. Even talent tiers. Curse potential on either side. This could be big, or it could just be given over after just a... Back and forth. I'm not 100% sure. You're killing me? Oh, I do my best, Dio. I'm trying to do my best. <laughs> I'm just here to have fun with all of you. Yatra gets thrown away. They're going to be seeing the divine storm in their faces. Diva's going to bop right into them. There's going to be an earthquake coming out from the thralls. There's a backline mech explosion forcing them to walk into Randy Newman, but they drop the sound barrier from Lucio and they're going to keep everyone alive as Gola ices in. Galleon is going to be still harassing as the diva gets caught in the ice while Wandy Woman is going to be going down right there as they are going to be just getting chain CC'd. The toss goes out into Galleon. Go for the throat into, not even go for the throat, excuse me, their curse ball. That was a dark flight from Greymane as they find the kill and that's going to be one for one overall. Diva losing the mech but the channel comes out in favor for the red team. They're going to have Curse. Randy Newman, oh my god. Randy Newman and Randy Newman will get caught by the Blizzard, and they're trying to make a counterplay happen on that clone, but it's not the case. And they lose two. Getting one, but this, honest to god, this is still really good for Antioch Oak League. They've got Siege Giants in bottom lane that will get the free fort. Mid lane should go down to this. Transformers low, but they should have enough sustain into this. Also to note, 13 out of the 20 stacks, excuse me, 30 stacks on the Echoed Corrupt... Oh my god. On the, uh... Chain Lightning. I keep wanting to say Trash Lightning, and I really should stop. I should make that a... I shouldn't make that a habit, because I might accidentally say it in CCL, and that might not be... Nice. <laughs> Best bald caster with red beard I've seen tonight. That's hyper specific, but I'll take it. Destroy 
your opponents do that in, in enough in their games? Oh, oh, okay. Uh, Gola, do you get out of this? Ice Wall buys the time, but Galleon and friends are up here. This should be Randy Newman going, excuse me, Nandy Newman going down. They drop the mech explosion, which will give them another mech, but that's Liork with a mop to the face, and they're going to go down a reset for Li Ming. And while they are going to be even on uh, kills, this is going to be a solid level lead, eh, maybe a little bit less than that for the members of Randy Newman and friends. I'm going to hold off on the experience damage and, num and, and healing until we see 16 talent here for both sides, because I'm just curious what the 16s are for uh, Annie Oak League, is they're looking at a boss for themselves. The Randy Newman boss is up in 45. No D.Va means they probably won't want to go for the invade. Oh, man. It's, it's, it's really rough for them on the side of Randy Newman, because losing one means losing a lot more than just losing one. Like, that means you lose your invade potential, you, you lose map priority, like, it's, you lose a lot. D not diva dear lord abathur's doing their best to actually push up this bottom lane and help out and it actually is amounting to quite a bit so that way they don't actually have to step into lanes and get potentially picked off but thrall is uh gonna manage the top lane as the boss comes barreling through Greymane is gonna be up here as well they want to try and burn this down as quickly through the lane as possible enemy team is gonna grab a bruiser camp on the right hand side as well siege giants are up and available in the right hand side and the boss is as well uh they do have an abathur mine on top of this so they will see them if they try and invade onto this and Let's, shoot. Let's jump onto our blue vision really quickly. I want to see this. So, Noir is showing. Yeah, they, they get hit with that mine, so they, they should be able to communicate this. And look at the collapse happening from the members of the blue side. And I think this might have read across the map. We'll have to see here, but this is going to be them coming in. Galleon getting low. There's going to be the earthquake from the Thrall. There's a blizzard from the May. This is a lot of damage into Yatre. The same thing can be said to the enemy side as the sound bear is used by the Lucio. So much damage into this Garrosh who gets bodied right there. Ice Wall coming out. Actually, just locking Leork in places. Vince is on the point. They're going to grab the boss, and this is going to be Randy Newman mech going down. I think that gives a reset to Li Ming. I'm not 100% sure. Nandy Ruman should go down, and that's going to be Tuna Newman going down. The only thing that's left and up and available for defense is Abathur, and they're going to literally tunnel into the Hall of Storms. They are that just afraid of the enemy team rushing in through the lane that they need to tunnel that way, and Curse is up and available. Thrall gets the channel onto that. It won't be Curse, but it actually is going to still be a lot of lane pressure up and available, and for the next I'd say easy 20 seconds they should be able to siege into this. Interesting use of the cryo freeze. I don't know why Gola used it there, but either way, they're going to take this bottom lane keep. Mid lane fort's getting low, but the camp that was pushing up is going to be uh, cleared out. That's May getting tossed around by Randy Newman. We have our Uther up in six as well as the Diva. Greyman not too far behind them as they're already on core. There's going to be a lot of damage into this. Garrosh, who makes it into the Hall of Storms just narrowly. That was some sliver of health. Gola ice slides out. They pop their medallion. This is going to be Lucio trying to amp it up. Grayman gets thrown in. Micro Missile's going out, but it looks like any Oak League are going to be able to burn through this core. Is it possible? Can they turn things around? Can they make the reverse three-game series happen? And it's exactly that. GG, well played. Any Oak League take the series in a 2-0. 2-1, excuse me. Really good turnaround. Repercussions of the bar? Maybe. Maybe I should name my uh, YouTube video that. <laughs> Let's see. Galleon was the captain from the other team. Uh, don't go anywhere, everyone. We're going to do a short interview, and then uh, we'll figure out what we're going to do from there. Alrighty, at this time I am joined by Gola. Congratulations on your 2-1 victory. How are you feeling? Good. Thank you very much. That was, honestly, that was a very, very intense series. Let's talk about this, because game number one, like, I, yeah. I, 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 I need to get away from this habit, but I gotta ask you, what happened in game one? Because, it, <laughs> like, they shut you all down so hard, and I want to know, was it comms? Was it just warm-ups? What was it? Uh, a number of things, right? They played really well. Yeah. Uh, we were a little cold. Um, we were playing kind of, it felt like the draft left us 
a win condition, but it was on a razor's edge, and and uh, they didn't give us much room. And any like tiny opening we had, we kind of flubbed. Like there was there was a little of that. Um, but uh, and and we've got a history of playing matches with these guys, uh, so it was tough. It was tough. I mean, I'll I'll say this. I'll be a hundred percent honest. This was so much fun to cast because like you gave me a storyline. I wasn't exp- like I'll be honest. Like they shut you down really hard in game one, yeah. and game two was looking a little wishy washy. But then you started yeah. to build momentum for game number two. Kind of moving away from why you failed in game one, but like what was it for game number two? Was it ten talent here? It seemed like thirteen to sixteen area for you all. Um, we, we've been paying attention to, uh, individual players, I guess. And we noticed, uh, the tank matchup wasn't into their favor and we were able to find a lot of, uh, openings there. And, and once we like were able to find safe damage, um, we, we were able to take advantage of that. It's, it was just crazy. Cause yeah, like it was, they didn't win out the early game hard by any means, but they definitely, yeah. they, they, they had some good moments and it, you all yeah. kind of seemed a little tiptoey maybe after game number one, but like yeah. you, yeah. you hit like a stride and then moving into game number three, literally that stride did not end. You had a lot of amazing pressure. Shout out to yeah. your Leoric player who had so many good mops to the face. I I'll be honest. There yes. were so many moments where uh, Yatre awesome. is, how do you say their name properly? Uh, Yatre. Okay. So I was saying Yatre. Just because yeah, I'm, cool. I'm a white boy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, I mean, seriously, like their, their Leoric mops were so on point. They were always in position, yeah. ready to go for it. Um, Great tombs. Can we, can we talk about game number three and what the game plan going into that was as you were one up on both sides? Because I'm curious what the mentality the team has going into that game. Like we, we keep an eye on our history, right? We lost uh, to them on Cursed Hollow in 13 minutes last season. And it was only just in June. So like last season, like a couple months ago. Um, so we were a little nervous and we we like had a bit of an idea of how we were going to uh, go into the draft. And uh, that was what we did. Um, we've talked about like uh, different band strategies and, you know, we're trying to settle on one that works. Honestly, you all, I mean, yeah, game one was a little, I'll be honest, was a little touch and go, but game yeah, two was, was great and game three, you all looked solid. So I don't know what it is. I was, you surprised, gotta... I was surprised they gave up the May. Um, I know, you know, she's not that powerful. She doesn't seem like she's that impactful, but it feels like she wins a lot. I don't know. It's, I, you know, the argument that I would make it in, uh, this is kind of a cop out, but it's like, it really comes down to the player and knowing where to put things because May, you all played it so well. Like you had so many good moments to literally use Blizzard to zone people back. And okay. the icing had so many good bops as well. Like it's, she's, she's undervalued because I think there's a lot of better tanks in a sense, but you yeah. all were, like a lot of good tanks were removed. So she kind of yeah. was the top tier at that point. So it was really good drafting, really good. And even chat was calling it out from game number two and onward that you guys had a, such a better drafting game two and onward in game three. I just, I'm blown away. Like you all like typically teams like crumble and they, they just like, they get this yeah. pressure and they're just like, I'm done. I'm out. That's the night. Yeah. But, We've good, had, good we've had those nights too. We've had those nights too. But we've been keeping it fun. We've been keeping it light. Um, you know, we we play a lot. Uh, maybe not as much lately, but you know, we try to we try to keep it regular and it's and try to keep it fun. You know, mm-hmm. and we well, love playing against the Newmans. Um, we oh really, god, they're a blast you know, to this, cast. <laughs> this is a tough match. You know, they are they are a really good team. They've got really good players. We were worried about all of them. You know, even the one that went to the bar. Uh, even the one that was in the bar. <laughs> we weren't sure if they were joking. You know? Oh, but, that's uh, too good. But Gola, thank you so much for the interview. Before I let you run out of here, are there any shots casting. that you'd like to give? The floor is all yours, my friend. Thank Again, thanks to NGS, mm-hmm. all the volunteers, all the people who keep it running behind the scenes. Uh, no one thanks you enough. Thank you for casting. Thanks to the other team. We love playing against the Newmans. We thought we had no, we, we thought this was an upset for us too. We were kind of shocked, um, but we, you know, we always give it our best. So thanks again for everybody. Well, thank you so much for the interview, Gola. Congratulations on your 2-1 you. victory for Annie Oak League. And I'll see Woo. you all further down in the NGS season number 10. Good luck. Have fun out there. Bye-bye.